you know what happens is so I I could have gotten him to sign it at Christmas this uh-huh. past Christmas this past Christmas this past Thanksgiving but I forgot because I just be like <laughs> oh shit you here like oh okay let's <laughs> let's just enjoy this. What's going on, Intel? How are you, man? Hey, hey, hey! How you doing, man? Good to see you. I'm good to see you. This is uh, we. I don't know if you remember. We spoke about a year ago. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you were covering up. You know, when we were building second generation Wu, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You had just uh, you had one song out with second generation Wu at the time. Just seven OD, I think, was the only song you guys had out. Yeah, that was the first one that that um, broke the seal, got sure. everybody uh, on board, and then listening. Yeah, man, I love and I love the record you guys put out with Second Generation. You've done so much in this past year, and I want to talk all about it. <laughs> yeah, let's. That's that's why we're here, man, and, I, and I'm I'm ready to. Um, yeah, I, I I we promised an album, and then you know, pandemic hit. Uh-huh. But once that once that uh, settled down, or rather the new year began, I was like, you know, we we got this record. Let me finish it up the best I can, and deliver it. As promised, you know, yes. and uh, the people loved it and uh, it's doing well still. And uh, shout out to Second Generation Wu Hereditary out now. Yeah, amazing. I, I just I, I've listened to that record for a while, but I just listened to the album you put out today. Like you just released thank a record you. today. So thank you so yes, much for, yes. for doing this interview. You released a record today and you you dropped the the music video as well. Um, yes, yes. For oh, man, Gospel. Yeah, shout out to Ari, the rugged man, you know, came <laughs> through. He showed a lot of support and love with the record and the video. He uh, also assisted with some of the editing too because he's a filmmaker as well. So the video oh. was super dope. Oh, dude, it's sick. I love how you did the color pop on the red like, thank throughout you. the whole, the whole uh, video. I don't want to say it's my specialty, but like since I figured out how to do that in editing, I, I kind of been getting crazy with it. <laughs> I watched another video you did. You edited. Uh, um, I forgot who it was, but you did a color pop with pink. Um, oh, so yeah, I have some artists that I've been signing single deals with uh, through my label Intellectual Entertainment. Shout out to Preem. That was his video. He had because uh, oh, he yeah, pulled yeah. he he and I, I and I'm taking inspiration from him. He pulled up to the video shoot with a hoodie with the artwork on it already. He ain't tell me. So I'm like, yo, like that's dedication. You know what I mean? Like that's sure. investment in yourself. That's fire. And the hoodie was bright pink. And he's like, uh, you know, like a gangster dude. So I'm like, yo, I respect it even more that you a gangster and you respect the color pink, which is a beautiful color. Uh-huh. And, you know, it's, it's a part of the, all the colors, which are beautiful. It's not really gender specific to me. Mm-hmm. And, um, and back, you know, back, back in the Cameron days, real men wear pink. So I'm editing and I'm like, yo, every, the city is like gray and monotone and grayscale and like gritty. Mm-hmm. But this hoodie is beautiful. I got to make the hoodie pop. Gotta make the hoodie pop. <laughs> yeah, it's sick, dude. I, I love that. Um, yeah, that that feature you've been using in your videos. Thank it's you. Cool. Very cool. Thank you. And not only have you done two records and two records, a uh, signing artist, a video, you had a, another kid in the, in the past year as well. Oh, yeah, Congratulations yeah. On that. <laughs> Shout out to my my daughter Layla Lyric Hawkins. She was born, uh, you know, a lot of children that were born in 2020. Unfortunately, society may call them pandemic babies or COVID babies. Uh-huh. I don't like I don't like that, you know, because <laughs> uh, they're not. They're they're right. children that that happen to be born during a really interesting time in human history, mm-hmm. and. Um, but they're still beautiful. And, you know, because we have had children during that time, the time can't really be the worst time for us. You know what I mean? Like I hear a lot of people like, yo, 2020 was the worst year of my life. Not only was it one of the most like uh, progressive years for me in terms of music, um, my my business actually made a profit for the first time since 2017. Wow. And, right? Yeah, Thank that's you. crazy. I was doing my taxes like what and then <laughs> my daughter was born so it's like uh it, 2020 couldn't have been the worst year of my life you know it was a struggle year but it wasn't the worst year of my life and and those of us that are still here uh rip to those of us that aren't but those of us that are still here we have to live on for those that aren't and uh, and keep doing what we're doing and get back to making uh great art great music or, or doing whatever it is that you do I love that. I love that. Well, thank you so much again for, for coming back and doing this. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, for those of you who haven't seen the first 
interview with Intel. You should check it out. Um, it's amazing. He goes through his, you went through your whole life story with us, which is great. Um, right. I don't know if you mind recapping just a little bit here. Um, Absolutely. Raised in Staten Island, you, you told me earlier uh, or about a year ago that you were born on the north side, but you moved kind of central, right, on, on Staten Island. You said it's kind of broken up in the north and south. Yeah, so Staten Island is, um, I mean, I hate to use the word segregated, mm -hmm. but it's its kind of always been segregated for like uh, a huge part of its history. It's still like that. The North, it's like you got Mid Island, North Shore, South Shore. I live in the Mid Island. It's kind of mm -hmm. uh, diverse. You got people from the South, you got people in the North, because it's where the mall is. So, and everyone goes to the mall. So it's a hub. Oh, interesting. So that's what kind of makes right? it the cent centralized. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, mm -hmm. I didn't know that. Because if you have a problem with people from the North, or you have a problem with people in the south, but you're at the mall, you're not gonna start trouble because right. everybody everybody's at the mall. That's like a <laughs> you know, it's like a place of peace. It's like the studio, the like Rizza studio, because everybody might have had you know problems with so and so, but when you come to Rizza studio, it was all about the music. You leave your guns at the door, like mm -hmm. leave all that drama at the door. It's about art. So you know, I'm not saying the mall is like that, but like that part right. of Staten Island is 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 like cohesion. But um. I was born in the North Shore and um, lived there for about a few years of my life. But in, uh, in March of 1994, I was, uh, you know, I got caught in a crossfire shooting and luckily mm -hmm. it became a survivor of gun violence. Yeah. Um, and then right around the time my father was building, um, for those of you that don't know, uh, I'm the son of you God from the Wu-Tang <laughs> Clan. My, Cause you know, I gotta, you know, you gotta remind people that just tune in like, who is this kid? Um, my, my father was building Wu-Tang at around that time with the other guys. So when the money hit, I mean, as soon as the money hit, he got me out of that environment. And then we moved in the nicer places in the mid island. Mm -hmm. And that's where I pretty much, I went to junior high school um, and, and had a lot of my foundation there, but then went to high school in the North shore with the North shore kids that were like, yo, you ain't broke with us. We didn't see you in junior high school. Who are you? Mm -hmm. So that was, that was interesting. And then got older and did music with the South shore kids that accepted me because I, you know, for whatever reason, they accepted me. Maybe mm -hmm. they were Wu-Tang fans. Maybe they actually <laughs> like me. Um, so I've been pretty much able to, to, to flourish throughout, but unfortunately it's still segregated, but I hope to unify the Island. Um, maybe not politically, mm -hmm. but at least artistically. Cause I it's like, that. okay, you, you can vote for Trump and I can vote for Biden, but if you make beats that are fire and I got rhymes that are fire, that's all I really need to know. You know what I mean? Sure. You vote for whoever you want to vote for, I'll vote for whoever <laughs> I want to vote for, but, but we need to get in the studio. You know? uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I love that. I love that. I love that. Um, I did say, well, you told me last time that you went to the same high school as your mom. Yes. Yes. So when she went, we, uh, we both went to New Dorp high school. When she went, it was like, heyday of like race riots and like, you know, mm -hmm. all the, the minority kids up on one floor fighting all the Italian kids on another floor and stuff like that. And she really didn't want me to go there because of her experiences there. When I went, it wasn't, you know, obviously it wasn't that crazy. Mm -hmm. um, and it was a majority of, you know, black and minority kids there. So if things did get crazy, I would have been probably safe. Okay. Um, <laughs> but it wasn't, you know, my generation is, you know, I don't, I don't want to say soft, but we're not as violent. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, because we grew up with the internet, we'll, we'll express those of us that have hatred in our hearts, which we should let go. They'll express that shit through the keyboard. You know what I'm saying? Right. They, won't, they won't go to school with a rock and a sock and be like, yo, what's good? <laughs> but 10, 15 years prior to the internet, it was rocks and socks and, 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 and garbage can lids and bottles. Sure. It's like, yo, we gonna meet up after school. And I'm just like, yo, that's crazy. But sidebar, hate is not inherently born it is taught it is mm -hmm. anyone listening it is taught so the person that you feel hates you for whatever they hate you for your skin color your job your gender they were taught that and they can still be healed i i, I truly believe that mm -hmm. you know what i mean mm -hmm. of course there's points in no return you know what i mean if you end up in jail for doing a hate crime hey you now you gotta you gotta heal with god <laughs> yeah, you gotta, you gotta heal with god brother <laughs> right, right. You, gotta heal with god, you gotta live with you that know? one <laughs> but if you, you know, I've seen Nazis get their tattoos removed and then go on a journey of, of, uh, of trying to make amends to those they hurt. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I've mm -hmm. seen uh, KKK members remove the hood and, and go on a journey to try to make amends. So I feel like, it, you know, there's still hope. There's still mm -hmm. hope. 
Well, that's... at least today. Today I feel like that because I'm having a good day because my <laughs> album is out, Computers for the Hood. Yes. Some days I, I wake up and I'm like, oh, humanity sucks. But today, woo, <laughs> it's a humanity. good day. It's a Shout good day. Humanity, man. A, vi- a video and your amazing new record. Um, very cool. I wanted to also want to ask you because I didn't ask you this last time. I was re-listening to the interview, so I didn't ask you the same questions over and over and over again. Uh, but you did say that your dad didn't really want you to do music like he didn't give you the the approval until you were 29 years old and i want to know what was that moment like what when did he go okay i support what you're doing now like was there a moment that that happened um so i would say he's just to let people know he's always been supportive of my endeavors in filmmaking mm-hmm well he's still to this day he's like yo you, you know you can still go back to school and be a lawyer right like he's still to this, <laughs> to this day he's like he gets he's like yo you know don't forget you always have options sure but he became supportive of the music i think once he saw that i you know that everything all the the progress that came with building second generation Wu. Mm-hmm. even though you know most people aren't particularly fans of the name and he wasn't a fan of the name he still saw the work it took you mm-hmm. know what i mean and and you know come to being completely honest and for all intents and purposes just so everyone is aware i did 90 percent of the work in building second generation Wu because i started before anyone else even had the idea to do it now i'm may, i'm not saying i'm the only one but i was the first one to have the idea and then begin to actually try and make it come to fruition for mm-hmm. 13 years. Then when I linked up with the other ones and everything came to fruition, it happened. And he saw that, he's like, yo, I know my boy is doing most of the work because he knows he how much work he's put in in his areas. Mm-hmm. So he sees that. Then he, when I, my name starts popping up in your circles without you doing anything, you know what I mean? So he had an interview, <laughs> that's how you got, that's how, that's, that's how that generation gets the respect from what I've seen so he was doing an interview and promoting his stuff and the people that are interviewing him are asking him about me oh and at that point you got to make a real cold hard decision in your heart do I stick to that oh I ain't gonna give my son no kind of support promotion in this music shit at all Uh publicly or let me finally just let let the world know that my boy is nice and I support my boy and we do music and who he is. And, you know, he was engaging in that. Still mentioning, yo, he's a filmmaker too. Hit him up for videos though, because he more wants me to be in that realm than hip hop. Okay. Uh, you know, because all the battles he's been through and stuff like that, he don't want me to go through that. But it's like, yo, it goes hand in hand. Like, yes, I'm a filmmaker and I do that as well. But I'm also really, really good at bending words mm-hmm. over beats. So I'm gonna keep doing that too. Yeah, yeah. I was gonna ask if he must have been pretty supportive of the film thing because you went to you went to yeah. film school. So yeah, always from day one. <laughs> I was like, "Yo, I want to make movies." He was like, "Word, that's dope." Okay, okay. Let's, I support that. And then I was like, "Yo, I want to rap." He was like, "No, <laughs> no, no." Until <laughs> until recently, and then I've been, you know, I guess also the type of music I was making, like I was doing a lot of rapidy rap, mm. as you would, you know, as some would say, where I'm like, I'm just I'm bending words and I'm bending words good. Mm. And it sounds good, but it's not really leaving you with anything. You know, and right. I did a lot of that in my earlier years and career. Now I'm at the point where I'm going through more as a father and as a human, and as a businessman, where the what I'm saying is way more relatable. I'm talking about real shit. I'm actually talking about stuff, content, mm-hmm. real relatable content. And he's hearing that and he's like, okay, I think he actually understands after 20 some years. So now I can, you know, give him a little bit and be like, all right, yeah, I see what you're doing. I, okay. I, I, I support that. I love that. I have an, and one more question on this, um, on our past episode, just because I re-listened to it. Like I said, um, I told you that I had your, your dad's book um, that he put out. And I said, I had a signed copy of it because I got it early. He like, he did it. He's like, okay, I'm going to release this many signed copies. And you're like, I don't even have a signed copy of right? the book. Do you have the signed copy yet? Or is he still not going to sign it for you? You know what happens is, so I I could have gotten him to sign it at Christmas this uh-huh. past Christmas, this past Christmas, this past Thanksgiving, but I forgot because I just be like, oh shit, you here? Like, oh okay, let's <laughs> let's just enjoy this, you know? What I mean? Right, right. So, he's really he's so busy all the time. He's got a lot sure. going on, and um, 
Uh, I just forgot. But uh, the next time I see him, I'll, yeah, I uh, hopefully I'll bring it up. There's no rush, though. I'll get him to sign it. No, I know. I know. I just thought it was funny because you're like, yeah, he, he, he didn't give me the sign one. He's like, probably thought I was going to throw it up on Amazon or no, eBay or something. Because he's because like when with with us being like, you know, people forget like the whole family element. Would you ask your brother for his autograph or something? Right, probably, right. probably not, unless you were a genuine <laughs> fan. But people have, you know, hard time understanding that. And I am a genuine fan, especially of him as an author. I'm, I'm more a fan of him as an author than mm-hmm. I am of him as a songwriter. That's, okay. you know, I love, I love his music, but like, just to have my father, just to be able to say my father is an author, like, that mm-hmm. makes, fills me with such pride and joy. It's, mm-hmm. it's astounding, and especially since I as many things as I can do and I can do with ease, writing a book is not one of them. I would, that would take me a great deal of time, effort and energy. Mm -hmm. Uh, So I I highly respect that. Yeah. 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 I just thought that was hilarious. You're like, I don't even have a signed copy. How do you have a signed copy? I don't even have a signed copy. I'm going to get it though. I'm going to get it though. (laughs) Yeah. Next time we talk, you, you, I want to make sure you get that signed copy. Okay. See, now that I have that and I got to meet this deadline, I got you. <laughs> right on. Well, okay. So yeah, you had a uh, 7OD was the, was the second generation Wu song at a time. Last time we spoke, mm-hmm. like we said, we've got, you've got a new record out today. Um, yes. Yes. You were doing, were you, are you still doing gifted? You were doing gifted um, with, with power, right? Yeah. So gifted is me power and meth's youngest. Um, oh, if we, if we put, you added yes, a member. Yeah. Um, and cause he's been doing more music with us, mm-hmm. still trying to find his place. Um, so I said, okay, well, you know, you get down with gifted cause you know, he's second generation Wu as well, but he, he, he likes what we're doing with gifted. So he's like, yo, okay. I want to be gifted. And, um, so that's, we're working on that cause power's doing a lot of the production, but he's working on his solo album. You know, so we want to make sure it's like everything has to have the right timing, but sure. gifted is still still a thing and there will be a project released. It was going to be called class of 2021, um, but I don't know if it'll still come out in, in 2021. 2021. So if not, then it might be class of 2022 because okay. I'm, I'm playing. We're playing on the whole um, X-Men thing. You know, Xavier's school oh, for gif- yeah. gifted youngsters. Uh. So if you graduate from Xavier's school of gifted youngsters, then whatever year you graduated, you, that would be your class year. Sure. So we gra- so you know we graduated from the mutant school in 2022, then we'd be class of 2022 gifted. I love that. Cool, cool, Thank cool. You. Okay, yeah. So I wasn't sure because we I was going like uh you you're talking about okay, you guys are really busy second generation woo as far as like the other members you know uh you had people you know, ODB's son was touring with Wu-Tang and everyone was kind of all over the place. You didn't really have a time to, to sit down and put the record together. So you're telling me that you're going to do maybe some gifted songs or in your solo record. When, what were you working on? So 7OG comes out. Were you working, like pursuing gifted for a minute and then decided to, you know, put this new record together? Or like, what was the timeline there? So 7OD came out and I was like, okay, we got to give him more music. Mm-hmm. So I just started prepping singles that I felt was appropriate. Then we got the Tommy Boy distribution. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So then I was like, okay, same thing, but bigger scale. And I kept feeding them singles as the uh, lead engineer and studio manager um, and label liaison for Dock Street Records. And um, did that and, you know, making the records and then delivering the records to Tommy Boy for during the, you know, 2020. And then when the end of the year came and, you know, I was like, yo, you guys want the album? And they declined and said that they wanted to focus more on internal stuff. I had to respect that. I said, well, I appreciate everything we'd be doing up Mm -hmm. until this point. It's cool. And then um, Doc Street was like, all right, so let's just put the album out independently. I said, cool, let's do it. And I, um, you know, put it together as cohesively as I could. And then we dropped it in January. Okay. My contract at that point uh, with Doc Street had been fulfilled and both of us decided not to renew further. So I then began to seek distribution uh, for my, you know, build up my own label and, and become more uh, independent. Um, Gifted 
was something that I was building simultaneous to second generation Wu mm -hmm. um, in case there was any legal ramifications that came as a result of using second generation Wu, which uh, I, I was I was 99% sure there wouldn't be. Mm -hmm. But if that 1% ever came knocking on the door, <laughs> sure. it's like, OK, well, now we can just continue to the people already know us. We can continue to make music as gifted. Um, okay. But I don't want to abandon it because it's such a cool thing and we own it. Uh, so it's definitely going to thrive and, and people will get to hear a gifted album either the end of the year or the beginning of next year. Okay, awesome, awesome. So you were able to actually finish finish the second generation Wu record quicker than you anticipated? Because, well, obviously the touring stopped. Well, so it, everyone it, wasn't kind of It took out. a back burner because i was we before, after 7 od we were going to release two more singles and then we were going to release the album so like the album the, was finished at the time pretty much oh okay and then what ended up happening was a lot of the singles you heard throughout the year were from mm -hmm. the album so uh because we decided yo the world is crazy right now like should we really release an album we can't tour behind it so tommy was like no everybody was like that's probably not a good idea so we just dropped um I, but i was like yo I, I, I need time to make new music mm -hmm. um and everyone's all scattered so i just started plucking singles from the album but then when it came time to release the album i'm like yo they've heard a bulk of it so i had to then reorganize the album to what it is now okay being hereditary because also the, some of the stuff wasn't working sonically and flow wise mm -hmm. and i was like yo this album needs to sound like this and even though the things we put out are like this and like this you know we're trying to capture different audiences but like the album needs to sound like this mm -hmm. um and and i was able to put that together and once that was out or simultaneously while finishing that is when dlp shout out to dlp respect the producer uh -huh. who, uh, produced uh, the, the new produced record the hood. yes yeah simultaneously he hit me up and me and him were going to work on a single which was uh track nine Django hardware that was the first oh, song that me and him to... did and your wife's featuring, on that record yes featuring prima 777 um he approached me about doing a single because actually it's not the first record we did the first record me and dlp did was we here now featuring which is the second generation Wu record distributed by Tommy Boy uh -huh. that's produced that's produced by DLP that was supposed to be on the uh the second hereditary but uh. I ended up I, I we ended up giving it as a single that song was also supposed to be 7OD that was supposed to be the first song where all second generation Wu members were on it we were like we we it was me Ghost Sun Supreme Young Dirty and Power and we, uh -huh. were in this, we were in Dragon's Lair, shut at Dragon's Lair Studio in BK, and with DLP, and all four of us were going to record that song. Um, we dropped verses on that song and put it out, and that would have been the birth of Second Generation Wu a year prior to 7 OD in 20. Oh, that was 20, Now I Know? Is that the song you're talking about? Sorry. I know it's, it's We Here Now. It's, oh, okay. Um, yeah, it's one of the older, it's under the Second Generation Wu brand. Got it. Okay. And, um, uh, but how uh, Young Dirty Bastard couldn't show up that day so it was just three of us and then supreme did decided not to rhyme on the song so it was just me and power that ended up being on the song so i was like well at that time that wasn't a second generation Wu song but then right. once i create created the brand i'm like anything with any of us on it is second generation, second generation. Wu, so became a second generation Wu single fast God. forward um the, finishing up the album dlp's like yo let's do another one went to the studio we did django mm -hmm. and then we did a video for it too and then uh, I was gonna release it. He was like, "Yo, look, why don't we do an EP?" And I was like, like musically fatigued at the time. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, he had shown me a lot of love, and he's a good dude. So I was like, "Sure, send me some beats." And then the beats he was sending me was kind of had me like, "Yo, like, this is this is crazy." You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And and it kind of got me more inspired to write more. Then what really sparked the like birth of Computers for the Hood? He was like, "Yo, I'm cool with Dell." The funky homo sapien oh. I, I was i was just chopping it up with him and i brought you up and he said he's like yeah he, i know intel i know about or i don't know him but i know about intel oh. and i was like what like that's like i grew up on dell like i grew up listening right. to deltron 3030 on the cd player oh, hieroglyphics you know what i'm saying like, <laughs> yeah so so when he said that i was like just the fact that he's aware of my existence is yeah enough. that's enough sure and then dlp goes and says Yo, like I was thinking, maybe I, I asked him, like, yo, to get on a record with you. What do you think? 
Like, I'm like, you never need my approval to see if Dell the Funky Homo Sapien wants to get right. along with me. Anytime that ever happens, you just you just try and make it happen. Just and, schedule um, me to come in. Right, wherever, wherever you need me to fly, Airbnb, right. I'll be there. And and um, he brought it up to Dell, and Dell was like, yeah, sure, of course. So we we sent him the record. He he he, he like he was rocking with the beat and the hook concept that I came up with because I didn't write my verse yet. And um, then he sent back his vocals, and I cried. I literally cried because oh, wow. like this is it's like a full circle moment. Like he kind of taught me how to rhyme in a way, you mm-hmm. know. When I when I heard Deltron Thirty Thirty, it was given to me by a, a, a hip hop mentor in junior high school. So that's from like the he was like a hip hop god to me because I wasn't I didn't like find hip hop. It was kind of like given to me, mm-hmm. and he he gave me the CD and my aunt bought me the CD player and I put those and I was listening mm-hmm. to this and then I. And I'd be like, this is after hearing like, you know, rap and hip hop on the radio, you establish, okay, that's hip hop. And then you hear this and you go like, what is this? And I'm like, yo, you can do this. You can rap about space and viruses and robots and aliens and you can make yourself this. Like he just opened a whole new world for me as an, as a, as a lyricist. Mm -hmm. So all these years later, being able to rhyme along next to him was like so surreal. So I took out the, the, the marble notebook and the pencil and I made sure I wrote my verse on paper mm-hmm. and I wanted it to be a homage verse. So if those that listen and if you are true fans of Dell, you'll be able to hear how perfectly and carefully I crafted this verse um, to show that I am a student. I love that. I love, were you a hieroglyphics fan as well? Not as much. Um, okay. Around that time, um, I was just absorbing what was given to me i didn't right. learn i didn't learn how to search yet okay and i didn't i didn't start learning how to be explorative with my hip-hop until limewire came out oh and, sure and, and around that time though uh it wasn't really a lot of the underground stuff on there it was pretty much just like the super big you know like 50 yeah, commercial radio it. stuff yeah. and then that that got me and then when i got older is when i went back and started to get into the the, the, the underground and really appreciate the lyricists because i was like why isn't these, why aren't these guys on the radio? Right. Like I was trying to understand like the concept of radio and, and everything and the business of it now. And, and, but you know, I'm at a point luckily where the business has, I understand it, but I'm not afraid of it anymore. And I'm not, it doesn't fatigue me and I'm creatively reinvigorated and I'm ready to, I'm ready for more. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I was just curious because uh, Oakland blackouts, the, the beat and like the, for that song is one of my favorite beats aside from bells of war on uh, forever those are like my two favorite beats like ever <laughs> um well tell me about computers for the hood so when did the concept for the record begin was it around that time or you know you get a chance to work with dell mm-hmm. you have the you have the django was it those two songs that really you built around for for this new record or pretty much okay. um i i wasn't really listening to django as much because okay. it was for me it was a different it was in a different universe so i was like all right i'll just tuck django there and then i was like but i got this i got hurrah mm-hmm. so like okay let me build something around hurrah and um which the idea for that song came to me from watching children's videos of my kids man like there's this really like, you've, you've probably seen it it's there's this ants video the ants go marching one by oh, one. Sure. Hurrah. <laughs> oh, hurrah. okay. The ants go marching one by one. Hurrah. So I, I sent, I, I literally did that and I sent that voice note to DLP. And uh, he was like, uh, what do you want me to do with this? You know what I mean? And then he sent the beat back, which sounds nothing like that, but mm-hmm. it still allowed me to build the hook around it. Cause I was just thinking like, you know, hurrah is something that isn't really said anymore and it is a cry of, of out uh, outrage or can be or cry of celebration depending on um how you look at it um so i was like yo let me apply that to the record but i wanted to build around that and it it the, the beats that i was getting wouldn't really allow me to string a whole concept from song to song so I just started to focus on each record individually. I was like, okay, this record is telling me to make make it into this. I'll make it into this. This record is telling me to make it into this. I'll make it into that. Then when I had like 15 records is when I was like, okay, this makes sense over here. This makes sense with this. Okay, let me add that. If I say this and that'll connect to this. And then a lot of stuff came together like in the fourth quarter, man. Like I'm talking about like the album is done and mixed and mastered already. And I'm watching Dave Chappelle and I hear huh? him go, 
uh, fuck Staten Island and anybody that lives on it except for Wu-Tang. And I'm like, oh, I got to sample that. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got to sample that. <laughs> and I sampled that real quick. And then I sent a version of DLP. DLP's like, yo, bro, like you're supposed to upload the album a week ago, bro. Like you still sampling shit? What's going on, bro? Um, <laughs> and there was just uh, something else. Oh, the, the spoken word with uh, Prima on Django. So then, yeah, uh-huh. after, after putting everything together, then I go and listen to Django. And I'm like, man, this doesn't really fit. But I'm going to make it fit. And then she came and added the spoken word. And I'm like, yo, this makes it fit even more. Oh. And, and it just kind of became that cohesive track listing that we have. I was able to whittle it down. And then when I listened to it, I was like, I, the title came when I was like arranging the tracks. Once I recorded most of it, because mm-hmm. we were like, what should we call this? And um, actually, no, hold on, back up. The title came from the intro. I, when I created the intro song after two or three songs had been made, then the intro song was made because I'm listening to this beat and I'm like, yo, what am I supposed to do with this? Boom, 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 boom. Sounds like New Orleans band. I'm like, yo, this is so out there. And I was playing in the, in the, in the um, studio for some people and we were, you know, doing our thing, smoking and chilling. And I just start freestyling. I'm like, computers for the hood. I said, computers for the hood. And I said, yo, I want y'all, when I say that, I want y'all to say it like louder, like y'all and I'm back. It was like, all right. So I was like, computers for the hood, computers for the hood. I said, computers for the hood, computers for the hood. So I'm like, yo, this is kind of be like a, like a little chant, a little anthem type of thing. You know what I'm saying? Like a little interlude. Mm-hmm. And it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah cool. Because I was like, I can't really do too much with the bump, 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 bump. Uh, but then it grew on me. And I'm like, nah, this is the, this, that's the album title. That's what I'm going to call this because that's how I feel inside. That's, and that's what I would do if I was a super billionaire. And then um, I found the sample for the uh, intro, the out outro part of the intro okay and then that made it come all together to to really send home you know what i'm about (laughs) in terms of information technology Uh knowledge and computers and utilizing those tools for creativity i love okay okay so the concept was really that you i was wondering where computers in the hood came up but you just said it if you had the money to, you would provide computers to everybody. I love that. Because you don't, you know, you've heard that, you, I'm, I'm sure you've heard, as, every, as, as we've all heard in movies and, and stuff, a mind is a terrible thing to waste, mm-hmm. right? But that's just an observation. The action behind that is computers for the hood. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's great. That's great. That's great. Um, I didn't realize either that you added uh, Prima's verse after the fact. So, so did Django was done a done deal, and then you said, you know, yeah, let's get her in the studio. Django, and Django was done. That's her on the hook to going Mango, uh-huh. Django. The song was done for a year, and then I come home from the studio, and she's like, "Yo, I, you want to hear something? If you know, if you got time, I don't." And I was like, "Sure." And it wasn't rap. It was because she's during the pandemic. She's picked up uh, poetry again, so oh, she started. Cool. She's been writing poems and spoken word, and she's thinking about doing a. Uh, spoken word album which i think would be really dope because that would be really dope sound design it in a different way than just instrumentation which Mm -hmm. is something i've never done which is a challenge which i excites me and i know it's going to be dope because when i'm in that space of being challenged is when i excel Mm -hmm. um but uh yeah she she and then she spit the poem and i was like oh my god like that's beautiful i was like i do i was like i i kind of want that for my album i was like you know, I know I've been asked because she's on a lot of music of mine that, yeah, yeah. you know, that's not, that's out and that it's not out, you know? Okay. You know, Cause have, she's on a uh, second generation record too, mm-hmm. quite a bit. Shout, shout out to Golden Meat Hooks. She's on that with Inspector Deck, uh, Sith, um, and myself. Oh. And, um, yeah, she's on quite a bit of music. So on the, on the back end, it's like, you know, people don't know that, but it's like, I don't want her to feel like, you know, like fatigue, you know what I mean? Like I'm always asking for verses. I'm always asking for stuff. Cause she don't, you know, she doesn't just shit out a verse. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. she cra- perfectly carefully crafts her verses. She still writes on paper too. Um, so I was like, uh, I don't want to, you know I want you on this album but I don't want to say like, oh you know, would you write a verse real quick? You know, mm-hmm. I said, can I, can I get that just as that is? And she said, oh, sure, she spit that. And then I sound, did a little sound design behind it. I had to help bridge it to the next record and uh it came out beautifully 
That's yeah, it is amazing. And your wife is so sweet. I had a chance to interview her as well. So make yep, sure to yep. tell her hello for she's me. She's got a she's got a record out, Poetry and Rhythm, available mm-hmm. on all platforms, featuring myself. And um, she's got more music coming out this summer too. So definitely make sure y'all check out Prima Seven 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 on all platforms and Instagram. I love it. And hopefully she'll come back and we'll talk to her as well. Any, any <laughs> We're the both of you together. <laughs> hey, man, that's the, well, you know, maybe we could do the intellectual entertainment label head interview. Oh, you know, we'll, we'll get, let me know. I'll get the suit. You know, oh, you know, we'll, yeah. I want to see you in a suit. So yeah, this is yeah. going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> awesome, man. Well, um, I want to talk to you more about this record. I love the song that you have with Method Man. Now I know. Um, mm-hmm. Thank you. Cool that you were able to get him, obviously. Um, tell me about that. So this record was kind of crafted in a way where the vocals are not from this time. The vocals are from me and Meph's very first collaboration. That's a song we did called The Sequel. Okay. Was that ever released or? It it was, but you know, I'm... I, I would say who was Intel then and I'll say who was Intel now. I'm still climbing. <laughs> right. You know what I'm right, saying? Right, right, right. Like, who was Intel? So um I probably should change my Instagram. No, no, no. Anyway. because uh, <laughs> no, no, no. I, I used to wonder why people why they change they have like who in front of their like who is Conway? Shout out to Conway. But okay. it's like it now I get it. I just unlocked it for myself. Um <laughs> you figured it you, out. because it's like yo, I'm famous, but like in my mind, I have to keep that mentality of like, nah, who am I? I still need to climb. Right. <sighs> You never so arrive. Zelda. Oh, that was fire. <laughs> exactly. And if you keep that mentality, then you'll be a billionaire before you realize it. But if you if you walk around thinking like, nah, I'm here already. Nah, uh-huh. fam. It's always who is until. So, um, boom, I, I lost my train of thought. Was I about oh, to I was talking about you. Uh, now I know. Right. The um, vocals are from 2016 from a record that me and Mev did called The Sequel. Um, I, I am re-releasing... I'm uh, collaborating with all my internal producers and I've, I sent them the acapella and each one of them did their own remix to it. And I'm releasing that later in the month as well. Oh, cool. Yeah. That's an, I'll send you that as soon as that's out. I would love but that. For, for this one, I sent it to DLP because he was going to do a remix for that project. Mm-hmm. And when he, but when he sent back, now I know just the reference with this, with no singing, I was like, this beat slaps and the way that you made like, cause our vocals are kind of like gritty New York rap, but over this like boom bap melodic kind of sh- like more upbeat type of production. I said, this, this slaps. Then he sent me back another reference with the singing on it. Shout out to Lomel. I said, nah, this is a, this is a, this is a banger. And then when he sent back the mix, I said, yo, I think this will fit perfectly on the album right here. What do you think? He said, hell yeah, let's do it. So that's how it ended up on um, Computers for the Hood. Okay. Um, but that beats Fresh 2021, cooked by DLP, mixed by and mastered by multiple, blast off at Dragon's Lair, shout out to Dragon's Lair and multiple. Um, and I'm like, yo, the rest of the album that I crafted is kind of like your bars. I'm just straight going in. Like, it's, we don't really give you no space to breathe. But the way that this record sounds, we're doing the same thing, but the way the hook comes in, the intros and the outro and the instrumentation, like it gives you some time to really like, summertime enjoy yourself like a good record upbeat so i was like i want to put this on this album and not the other one okay. um so that's how that's how that came together um because also with meth too it's like i could get a verse from him anytime right. that i would like if he has the time but he's doing a lot right now you know what i mean uh-huh. he's with the movies the, the the acting his own entertainment uh production filmmaking arm branch of thing that he's creating right now mm-hmm. uh, so I'm, I'm just in a space where um, let me utilize everything that i have to the fullest you know mm-hmm. let me utilize the create new resources and and let the resources that have helped me get where i'm at you know let them replenish themselves and mm-hmm. and, and see what i could do on my own is he uh working on the second season of an american saga yes he is okay i did see, actually, i didn't even Okay. Well, I know you were on it the first season. Mm-hmm. Um, you were in a couple of the episodes. I just saw mm-hmm. that they were doing a second season like a few days ago, and I'm like, oh, I got to ask him about this. Uh, I don't know what you can tell me about it. Are you on the second season? I am. Okay. <laughs> I'm super, super excited because, like, I really wanted that. I, I manifested it every day that I left season one. Um, 
I'm playing the same role. I'm reprising my role from season one. Okay. Uh, I, season one of episode three and episode eight, I play a Jamaican rapper who is the one like a antagonistic type of energy for the for the Wu Tang Clan. That's mm-hmm. pretty much all I can say about season two and my involvement is just I'm in it and it's great. And this season is going to be better than season one. You're going to love it. And, awesome. Um, are you still in the wardrobe department? No, no, they fired me. Season one, they fired me. <laughs> oh, they me. did. Yeah, and I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. I'm gonna, I'm in a state of uh, honesty and authenticity today because it's a good day because computers for the hood is out. Um, <laughs> they fired me for insubordination and poor time management. Uh-huh. Is what is what they say. What's they and I, I'll take a, I'll take accountability for the poor time management. <laughs> Cause uh, you know, had a newborn baby at home and mm-hmm. had to and take another and your son, right, right? And, yeah. No, no, this was when my son was born. Oh, this was the, oh yeah, because this is first yeah. season and got it. Yeah, he was the newborn at the time. Also, they fired me after I got my role in the show. So maybe there might have been a little bit of jealousy there. Maybe there uh. might have been a little bit of jealousy there. But that's neither here nor there. They thought I didn't do my job to the best of my ability. They let me go. It's all gravy because I'm on season two, not as a wardrobe PA, but uh-huh. as a co-star. Uh, oh, awesome. So the role expands. I love yeah. this. Right. No, I mean, I think I might have co-star supporting. I got lines. I got lines. Uh, Check me all... out on season two of American Saga. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. And then, like we said earlier, the video for Know the Gospel came out today as well. Um, do you have more videos coming? Let me just touch on that real quick. This okay. The, because like, it's like literally like live in the moment as it's happening, the stress of life. And I want to make sure that you get it first because um, you are here with me as it's happening. Right. <laughs> so with the, the video, it's out now. Right. I just finished editing it like a few hours ago. Oh, you know? really? Bro, it's, it's <laughs> that. It's, it's not that old. It is okay. not. It hasn't been sitting on YouTube for like a month. We've been checking it out, like getting it ready. It is a few hours out of the womb. And shout out to me and RA just coordinating. He's in Germany. And we've just been coordinating over the last 48 hours to make sure that it just everything was right because we were having some technical issues. We just a lot of technical issues. And uh, and he's a good dude. And, and he stayed up late. And we both stayed up late. And then we got it done. Because the you know PR marketing people are like, hey, where's that link? Hey, right. Hey, we need the link because you know people you know you said it was out. We need the link. So people it's out. Where's the link? So uh, I sent them the link literally like a few minutes. Like I looked at, I sent them the link. Then my alarm goes off. Hey, we got an interview of one. I'm like, oh, I didn't. Even, did I sleep? I, I, oh, okay. Let's <laughs> let's throw the hoodie on and let's like, you know what I mean. Like so, shout out to R.A. the Rugged Man. Know the and shout out the D.O.P. and Shout out to everyone that's going to watch and share. Know the gospel. The official video is out right now. You can you can just get it on YouTube or you can go on my website, intelmakesmusic.com. I'm going to start promoting and blasting it off after I wake right up in a few this. hours. But um, <laughs> yeah, I hope you guys love that. Some of my best work. Um, and shout out again, shout out to RA for editing some of, uh, some of it as well with me. And uh, yeah, you guys are going to love it. I will say, um, I did see on DLP's Instagram a few days ago, it was like video out Wednesday, we was plugging in. I'm like, okay, cool. And then earlier I was like looking for the video. I'm like, did I screw this up? Like, I don't see the video. And then it, like, I found it and it was like, it had been out for 17 minutes. <laughs> and I'm like, I watched it a couple of times and I'm like, oh, I wonder if Intel is going to be able to, if he's like, just probably has so many things going on i don't know if he's going to be here today <laughs> but i appreciate I, you being here <laughs> and I, I appreciate you watching it every every time uh because like i said it was uh it was a run and gun situation because when you upload something to youtube also i did i i'm a, i'm a, I, I do stuff you know like batman bruce wayne i prepare you know i'm not a last minute type of person right right so i had the video uploaded last night but when I woke up this morning, I was also supposed to wake up at six. Didn't do that. <laughs> so when I woke up late and I'm like emails from everyone, like, yo, where's the video? I go to check just to watch it one final run through to make sure it's okay. It's stuck on uh, like 360p. You know what I mean? Like the, yeah. the, the definition is very low. low and I'm right. like, I'm like, yo, it's been processing all night. What the fuck? Like, what yeah. is this? 
So I give it some more time, refresh my computer. It's still stuck. So I'm like, okay, <laughs> this, this, this is a technical issue. I have to re-upload the video. And it takes time when you, when you upload it to, for it to process the standard definition, the high definition, and the 4K definition. It takes right. about a half hour. It takes about a half hour. So I'm like, okay, and I re-uploaded it while waiting for the other one to process. And what, what the, I figured out what the issue was. The, the previous version I uploaded, I uploaded it from my external hard drive. Oh, that's so it's a, that's do, a no, yeah. no. It's going in, yeah. The I chain. didn't know that. I just learned that this morning. <laughs> I just learned 29 years of tech. I just learned that. I used to work for Apple. I used to, I just learned that this morning. I'm like, yo, this because I uploaded stuff from my hard drive directly to YouTube before. Never had that issue, but for whatever reason, God is like, hey, let's see if you're really paying attention today, yeah, right. right? So I, uh, I put the file on my computer, uploaded it from my computer. It was golden, but now it has. To, I'm like waiting for the 4K version to hit before I send the link out. Because, bro, if I would have if I would have just uploaded the last night and then sent the link and been like, "Oh, I can go to sleep. It's fine. It'll take care of itself." Uh -huh. Right now, you would have watched a, uh, you would watch know the gospel and it would have looked terrible. The quality would look terrible, and I would have woke up and I would have cried my eyes out. I probably would have had to reschedule the interview. You know what I'm saying? But <laughs> I'm glad it worked waited. out. Then. Yeah. I waited. I waited. Patience is key. Let every you know. I'm letting everyone know patience is key. I waited. And I wanted it to be right for you guys. We put a lot of time, energy, and effort into this music video, and we wanted to, we wanted it to be just right because it's gonna live on YouTube forever mm -hmm. until YouTube becomes Skynet, becomes robots, become you know what I'm saying? But we'll get sure. <laughs> well, the video's dope. The, the record is incredible. Um, Thank you, obviously, man. Thank and you. the second generation Woo record is incredible. Everything you've been doing is, um, and I really appreciate you, especially on such a busy day taking time and, and chatting with me this again. Is, this is this has been fun as always. It's it's uh it's a pleasure. You guys uh you guys have supported us and you know, hopefully you keep supporting us as, as we climb up this ladder, man. Dude, bring course. it back. Of We're course. Keep bringing it back. Keep bringing it back. And keep coming back, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> like I if said, I, I need to see you in a suit with uh as the as the CEO of your company. <laughs> absolutely. Jay-Z status. Yes. I aspire. I aspire to get the Jay-Z status. But whether I get the Jay-Z status, Drake status, Michael Jackson status, or I stay where I'm at right now, I, I bringing it back podcast will always have access to us wherever we are, whatever we're doing. Dude, I love it. I love it. And so you got much. that on record. Yes, I'm gonna hold this to you. If you, I'm gonna hold send you the clip. <laughs> if, yo, don't let don't let my ego ever inflate. If I get to the if I get to the point where I'm unreachable, which I doubt I'll ever get to that. I mean, I, I I'll be a billionaire, but I still want to be reachable. Yo, okay, so, I was gonna say you'll get there. If you, for whatever reason you can't reach me, just send that clip to my manager. My manager's gonna be like, "Yo, look at this." I'm be like, "Oh shit!" Like, all right, yeah, let's do that. I gotta talk ASAP. to Adam again. Sorry. And, then I, and then I'm gonna and then I'm gonna. And then I'm gonna and then I'm gonna be like, why? Why am I so unreachable? Let's address that. Let me get back to being reachable. <laughs> I love it. And I and I saw um, on your YouTube that you did a show recently, like like last month or so. Yes. Yeah, so um, while while just uh, once while you know situating things with computers for the hood, because there was a couple of points where I'm just like sitting waiting for verses and like stuff is mixed and like you just gotta wait. It's a waiting game. Um, I don't do well waiting. You know what I'm saying? Idle hands. So uh, I also started building and linking with an, another um, you know, en uh, engineer and producer on the island. Shout out to Agent Blur. Mm -hmm. uh, he's actually one of the voices, the voice of reason on track 11. Oh, really? I'll and, have to go back yeah, and listen to it. Okay. Yeah. And uh, he's like, what if we give you know, the computers to one of the kids who's trying to make their mixtapes? That's, that's his voice because we recorded that in his studio just with my iPhone. But um. He, he embraced me after my situation with Doc Street. Um, you know, we, we decided not to renew. So I was like, yo, I need a new home base. And he, he welcomed me with open arms at his studio. So that's where I currently operate out of. Operate out of uh, shout out to Agent Blur, back of the bus studios. But I'm also in process of building my own studio, the Zen Den. Um, just looking for investors now. Cool. And um, yeah, and then I'll get that up and running. Very cool, very cool. Intel again, man, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, yes, make sure you. to say hello to your lovely wife and I we'll want to have her back on as well. Um, and one more question for you, even though you've already answered this before, I want to see, maybe I'll get a different answer from you this time around. If you have any advice for aspiring artists. Oh man. Any advice for aspiring artists? I have been asked this, but I love the question. Cause like you said, you, you know, you may get a new response. Any advice? I think what I said before was, 
know your worth. Um, but what I'll say now is put your money where your mouth is. Don't be afraid to invest in yourself because a lot of people are out here getting money from working or the government or wherever you're getting it from. And if you get money and all your bills is taken care of, but you claim you a rapper and you don't have no visuals out, you don't got no album out, solve that. You know what I'm saying? And then also, it's not just about making music and putting it out. Put money behind the art that you created. So you gotta, you need money to create it and you need money to put it in people's faces it's to the point where they like, all right, all right, I'll consume it, it's great. And um, that's what I would say to, to any aspiring artist. Uh, know your worth and do not hesitate to invest in yourself. Bring it back for you.